at the Venetian. Very excited to be partnering with the Venetian the Tau Group uh, to support uh, the Eastern Congo Initiative, which is a philanthropy that I've been involved with for 15 years now, and it supports, among other things, uh, clean water, health care, neonatal care, support for uh, victims of survivors of gender-based violence in the eastern part of Congo in Africa, which is a little talked about, poorly understood region that's suffered a tremendous amount of war and destabilization and doesn't get a lot of attention at the time. What we want to do is not just raise awareness, but raise money. And our approach is not that we are the experts at giving the money away. What we do is identify Congolese community-based organizations who really understand their communities and have the best means to distribute it. And uh, over the years, we have a, a women's-led uh, uh, media news station called Afem, who supported uh, hundreds of thousands of kids going to school. We have now uh, 400,000 people who are uh, supported with health care and clean water, uh, which simply is not available in many areas. And so by providing the sort of basic fundamentals that I believe every human being is really entitled to, and actually turning many of them into um, entities that are sustainable, that don't require ongoing investment. You make one investment, you build the health care, doctors and nurses, and you run the pipes through the water. Uh, it runs, people pay a couple of cents for a big thing of water, which they can afford. Uh, they have clean water, they have health care in an ongoing way, rather than having to come back and raise more money every time. And it's, it's worked really, really well. I'm enormously proud of it. It's the first time we've ever done any publicity around any one of our events. We've been doing fundraisers like this for a long time, uh, in part because I didn't want to be sort of trumpeting this. It's not about uh, like self-aggrandizement. It's a explicitly humble endeavor that says these communities that people understand best how to care for what what they're um, dealing with in their country, their region, their town, and so we want to empower them. But the um, the Venetian was kind enough to really to throw a pretty spectacular event for us, the Tau Group, Mark Scheinberg, and so I felt that uh, you know they really ought to be recognized for that. Because I'm very grateful. And I've learned that if you can help bring partners into this, you can. I mean, you can raise more money. Frankly, imagine a couple of million dollars. You know, goes so far in a place where five hundred thousand dollars is going to do uh, clean water and health care for one hundred and fifty thousand people forever. It's really amazing. We we work with uh, justice programs where we take women who've been raped and and give legal counseling to help them get to the court system. It's often quite difficult. And you know, uh, former child soldiers are, who are trying to be uh, reintegrated into a society need to be trained and find jobs and, and connect with people that will hire them so that they don't have a kind of aimlessness and continue to perpetuate violence in the region. These are all concepts that were generated from the Congolese to us. The ECI staff, we have uh, at facility, we have 75 people in Congo now who are Congolese. This is not about Americans or Western Europeans coming in and saying, this is how to do it. It's about us listening with humility and trying to provide support. Uh, in 2005, uh, when the war in, in Congo was really, you know, raging out of control and it was really poorly understood and nobody even knew about it, there had been millions of deaths. Uh, I traveled to Africa, I was actually in Tanzania, and I heard about this war and no one would go there. You know, NGOs would go there, no one would travel there. And I was young and probably foolish enough to think, well, you know, why? Why won't they go there? If I have some value at the time, I thought, well, I can shine a light on it and at least create some exposure. And really what happened was that I was educated. And I got to, uh, uh, I, did, I spent months and then another year, another year meeting with, meeting with you know, professionals, with, with locals, with organizations on the ground doing this work, international NGOs, academics, uh, heads of state, you know, civil society, to really get educated on what is this problem. Uh, because I was very mindful of coming in and saying, here I am, I'm famous, I'm going to solve your problem. Because like a famous person showing up, as it turns out, doesn't solve anybody's problem. Uh, what solves problems is support for people who just don't have access. You know, if you're a Congolese organization, you're not a 501c3, you know, Americans can't give money to get a tax deduction. First thing we do is become a conduit so people can do that. And then we built up a staff, a local staff, 
and expanded from there. And there was fighting and there was war. And we, we did some films about it. We worked with UNHCR. We, we visited refugee camps. And we didn't want to just show up at hospitals holding hands. We wanted to provide assistance, not have it be about me. Uh, but over the years, I got I was invited to testify in the Congress, the Senate, around what I had seen, and it was really powerful and really meaningful to me. I mean, I look at I remember my own time in school, for example. You know, in parts of Congo, there is no school. You have to pay two dollars a month, which is very difficult for some families. So we started funding schools. When I would visit them, you would see, you know, a classroom with a hundred kids in, three kids at a desk, a notebook full this much, paying attention raising their hands, and I thought to myself, I squandered and wasted and took for granted my educational opportunities. Oh, I have to go to school, or I'm going to cut school. When you don't have something, so how meaningful it was. This is a story I often tell my children about, like, hey, look, this is what's going on here. This is a valuable thing in education. We'll take it for granted. And it really moved me. It moved me that instead of, when I went to Africa, and I had heard about all this conflict, I didn't see people who were victims, who were lying around with flies in their eyes, sort of waiting for a savior an incredibly vibrant, robust country. I traveled to nine other countries around there in that sort of conflict matrix. At one point, Congo had at least seven other countries inside that invaded their country because there's so many minerals there. And I just felt like this is a, 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 a way in which a difference can be made. It needs to be made out of humility and by listening and not assuming that because a country is stabilized or doesn't have the same resources, um, that those of us who were born in a place that does automatically sort of know that or, or that we can just by showing up sort of lend some of the refractive glory of our here let me you know give you a you know the things that I have that are right it's not about that you have to build a system that is sustainable uh, I got that honor of working with Dr. McQuaggy at the Pansy Hospital very early on who was doing surgeries on women who had suffered sexual gender-based violence on very young girls who had given birth too early and it moved me enormously. He was doing 15 fistula surgeries a day, uh, and we wanted to support him in his hospital. He subsequently won the Nobel Prize. I'm honored that I feel like as a friend of mine, I, I knew him when, you know. He's running for president now in Congo. It's, uh, so we've had the chance, by uh, being in this organization that's consistently present over years and years, to really have some sense of what's happening in terms of who are reliable partners that we want to support. So I, obviously I could go on and on and on about this, but. Uh, and it is a little bit in Congress from a fun Vegas night, but here's the thing, that's okay. Like, this is, is okay to have fun, it's okay to have a great time and go out and have a club. A beautiful aspect of it is that you can do the same thing you would do otherwise. Enjoy yourself, enjoy your life, which we all should. And also genuinely uh, give some of what we have to those who, yes, have less and who also are in place and desiring and able to take that and really build something meaningful. That's my wife, Jennifer. What's that? Are you ready for me to go? Okay, time for me to go. Yeah. Okay. All right, what? Yeah, I'm just going to ask last question. Yeah. Any tips on the players so I don't have to win at all? I've only won this event once, so I don't know if you want to add. I would say play aggressively, rebuy often. The more chips you have, the better like you got to win. F1 plan? What's that? F1 plan? No, watch tonight. The, the, uh, I'm going to watch the thing. Thank you, sir.